Hello students, let us start with the chapter structure of atom also known as atomic structure. This particular video will deal with the introduction part of this chapter like what are atom, right? Who discovered it? How was the structure of atom established? Who were the various scientists which put, put forward these concepts related to the structure of atoms, right? What are fundamental particles? What are subatomic particles? Okay, so this introductory part is again very important to you to understand the details related to this chapter, which we'll be studying in the next time, okay, or in the upcoming videos, right? So let's focus on this particular topic. If you're not able to understand it, it will be better if you go through the topic again, if you go through the video again, so that the concept will be more clear to you. Again, the years which are specified, right, the history which is given, the sequence which has been specified, that is important to you in with reference to your exams or the competitive part which you will be attempting in your later futures. Okay, so let us start with the introduction. As far as the concept of atom is concerned, this term or this concept, the basic concept was given in the year 1808. It was proposed by Dalton that there is a certain smallest indivisible particle of matter which he termed as atom okay then further came various scientists however this theory was accepted for a longer period of time you can just imagine from 1808 to 1897 almost atomic structure related nothing was proposed right so it was accepted for a very long period of time but then came various theories various discoveries put forward by scientists like Thomson, Rutherford, Bohr and so on, right? And then the percep perception changed. Then we believed that no, atom is not a smallest indivisible particle. Rather, there are still smaller particles present like electrons, protons, neutrons and so on, okay? So, let us consider certain discoveries. In the year 1897, J.J. Thomson put forward the discovery of electron. He gave the concept of electrons. Okay. In 1909, Rutherford gave us the concept of nucleus. So you can just imagine here in the year 1897, there was no concept of nucleus existing. Now we know when we say, when you have been said that yes, atom, you just start imagining that yes, what is atom? A nucleus and it is surrounded by electrons. Okay. But Till the year 1909, the structure of nucleus was not known to us, right? Then in the year 1913 came Niels Bohr. He gave the concept of Bohr's atomic model. So as per that model, we came to know that electrons are having specific energy and they are able to revolve within a certain orbit. So that is as per Bohr's atomic model. Then came R. K. Millikan in the year 1979. He gave the charge on the electron. He said there is certain electronic charge existing. And what was that charge he found out? It was 1.60 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs. Right. And he converted it into ESU as well. That came to 4.8 into 10 raised to power minus 10 ESU. ESU is electron spin unit. Okay. Then in the year 1924, came forward de Broglie and he gave the concept of wave particle duality, right? Then 1926, Schrodinger said or he proposed his Schrodinger's equation which was found to be the basis for quantum mechanics. So it was a very important concept, very important equation, right? Uh, given by Schrodinger. After that came his Hessenbergs in 1927, he gave his principle known as uncertainty principle, right? So these were the very various important discoveries which help us to understand the structure of atom in more and more detail and to get the clarity of it, okay? Now, further if you consider that yes, we know up till now that atom is made up of various atomic or subatomic particles then overall if we consider it has been found out that there are three fundamental particles which are those three fundamental particles electrons 
protons and neutrons right in addition there are about 35 different subatomic particles which are also known to us till date now the next question came with reference to the scientists now they were looking up to answers for certain important questions like if you are aware of the atom now why the stability of atom why atom has a certain stability okay yeah why a particular element is different from that of the other element in terms of physical and chemical properties right or the next question you can consider why two different atoms combine and form molecules so such various questions strike the mind of scientist and they tried to move ahead okay and then came the various discoveries again okay now what we are going to do is now we'll see the basic discoveries like about the fundamental particles so let us see how the fundamental particles were discovered we know that an atom is electrically neutral okay and we also were aware that it contains negatively charged electrons okay but if it contains negatively charged electrons and it is neutral that it must also contain certain positively charged particles okay and this was then confirmed that positive charged particle was confirmed by goldstein okay so goldstein confirmed the existence of an important fundamental particle which is that important fundamental particle which is positively charged that is proton okay so let us see how we discovered proton we'll just see in brief since we are on the introductory part of this we'll see in uh, brief how he considered or how he uh, showed the existence of protons within an atom right with the help of discharge tube experiment so what he did is he took a tube a discharge tube which was connected to vacuum so this is connected to the vacuum here right then he attached two metal plates acting as an electrode one was acting as cathode other was acting as an anode anode is a positively charged metal plate and cathode is a negatively charged metal plate okay this was connected to a high voltage okay now one more thing he specified was he used perforated cathode what do you mean by perforated cathode that means there are certain perforations within the metal plate with it on the cathode side right okay now what he did he passed an high voltage between the electrodes of a discharge tube as soon as the high voltage was passed it was found that some rays which were coming from the side of the anode okay so some rays started coming from the side of anode and they pass through the holes in the cathode right and this anode rays which he termed as canal rays why canal rays because like discharge tube it's in the form of is it, it is like a canal right so the he said this as canal rays were formed from the anode side right and this anode rays or canal rays they were found to consist of positively charged particles right now how this positively charged particles then appear see when we say atom atom is neutral okay this neutral atom we are what we are applying we are applying an high voltage right so in presence of an high volt potential what will happen this neutral atom will have a tendency to give away electrons so electrons will be given out right and when electrons are given out what will be converted neutral atom will be converted into a cation yes or no electron is given out so it will be resulting in the formation of an cation or a positively ionic species okay now this positive ionic species that is with what we are talking about the positively charged particles which are showing their movement to the cathode rays or to the cathode side right since this is positively charged so definitely it will have an attraction towards the negative side plate able to understand okay further you also found out the charge to mass ratio of this positively charged particles and he observed when the discharge tube 
was filled with hydrogen gas the your e by m ratio or charge to mass ratio of positively charged particle was maximum can you tell me when you fill this discharge tube with h2 or the hydrogen gas why the charge to mass ratio will increase or it will be maximum because hydrogen is the lightest element right and this positively charged particles we say these are protons is it clear and this was this complete concept was given by goldstein now let us see the other concept of this next fundamental particle neutrons they were discovered by james chadwick c h a d w i c k it was discovered by james chadwick right and how it discovered he took beryllium or boron particles right and bombarded it with alpha particles see this so beryllium bombarded with alpha particles alpha particle is helium 2 helium 4 right and this resulted in carbon 6 plus neutrons so this was the discovery of neutrons which was made by james chadwick right now this is about the brief discovery of the fundamental particles electrons protons and neutrons now as far as this three particles are concerned let us consider certain characteristics which can be quoted as on your screen so symbol the first row you can consider for electron proton and neutron next is the approximate relative mass for as it is given to you now this approximate relative mass can be converted into atomic mass unit that means you can calculate mass in atomic mass unit amu so 1 amu is equal to 1 upon 12 of the mass of an individual atom of carbon 12 okay and what is that mass that is equal to 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg okay so that's you can observe here see this column mass in amu so you can see the mass in amu for electron it is 5.485 into 10 raised to minus 4 for proton and neutron it's almost equivalent to 1 amu that is equivalent to the mass of carbon 12 so it is 1.007 in case of proton and 1.008 in case of neutron to be particular okay so we can say they have approximately equal masses again one more thing we can note down here is regarding the approximate relative mass so as per this concept you can say electron is about 1836 times lighter okay and as a result what you can say its mass can sometimes be neglected as an approximation yes or no if i consider the approximate relative mass of proton and neutron if i take it out to be 1 and 1 almost same right it may, it may be different in terms of its decimal points to a very small extent but electron is 1 upon 1836 that means the mass of electron is very very small and can be neglected okay as far as the charge is concerned you are aware electron and proton have equal but opposite electric charges while the neutron is neutral it is not charged okay so that's about the fundamental particles now we will see certain non fundamental particles and certain details about them there are various non fundamental particles which exist of this we can consider some like positron specified as 1e0 or e plus okay this is basically a positive electron right it was discovered by anderson in the year 1932 okay so it is not a very like old discovery it was discovered in the year 1932 by anderson it is you can say a positive counter counterpart of electron right as far as the mass of positron is concerned it is same as that of electron what is the mass of electron it is 9.1 into 10 raised to minus 28 gram 
okay or in terms of kg we say it is 9.1 into 10 raised to minus 31 kg okay so it's almost same mass of electron uh, it is respectively to this so it has same mass of that of electron as far as the charge of positron is concerned it is same but with opposite sign as that of electron that means if i consider charge so electron has a charge of minus 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb so what will be the charge on the positron it will be plus 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb is it okay as far as this positrons are concerned the non fundamental particles these are very unstable right and it they combine with electron producing gamma rays is it clear then we'll see the next non fundamental particles so these are neutrino and anti neutrino these are the particles of approximately zero mass and charge okay as far as neutrinos are concerned and anti neutrinos are concerned this were discovered by the uh, by scientist Pauling in the year 1933 okay and also um, like confirmed by Fermi in the year 1934 okay after that the next non-fundamental particle is antiproton it was discovered by Sega S-C-G-R-E as far as the mass of antiproton is concerned, it is equal to 1.673 into 10 raised to minus 24 gram. And the charge of the antiproton is equal to minus 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. So, as far as the charge is concerned, it's equivalent to that of charge of electron. Okay. Then, the next non-fundamental particle this is meson okay this particular non fundamental particle was discovered by yukawa in the year 1935 okay now this particular particle can be positively charged negatively charged and neutral okay now on the basis of the charge which it can possess the mesons are of three types right one type of meson is called as pi meson other is called as mu meson and the neutrally charged meson is called as neutral meson or also denoted as pi naught meson okay now as far as this pi mesons are concerned these are called pions p i o n s okay meson indicates the stability of the nucleus right as far as the mass of meson is concerned it is 200 times heavier than that of electron right that means what you can say it is very much heavier than electrons but if you compare it with proton it is lighter than proton okay so how much time it is heavier than electron 200 times heavier than electrons but lighter than protons okay so i hope through this video you're very much clear about the various fundamental particles the basic concept of atom and the various non-fundamental particles involved within an atom. Is it okay? Now in the next video, I'll give you the specification about the CRT model for discovery of electrons. Thank you for watching.